Hello, it's Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com. This is the Groby project in GitHub, and it's for SEO and social media awesomeness. And it is time to think a little bit about passing rows around as arguments or parameters to a function. Because even though we had an issue earlier between pulling our rows up by dictionary keys in this uppercase and by list indexes in this lowercase, once you've pulled it, you've got a row. Those are the things that we're listing. Each time we, we run this program like this, it's going to step through and each time it hits a row in either the Google spreadsheet or the CSV file, it outputs a row. So our data types on the row level is exactly compatible. And so once we get down to this row level, we can use the same function, uh, whether it came, was invoked from the spreadsheet or the shell uh, way of calling it. So, uh, I like thinking in terms of a row. And in fact, we have this uh, variable name row here, which is, I don't like that because usually when you're doing uh, cell manipulation, you've got a row and a column and uh, the concept of a row is much stronger for uh, knowing that you're dealing with a whole row instead of just some number for the row. Uh, so let's see, I believe that was just those two places and it is. Now, um, as we scroll down this, it's important to remember what's here beneath the fold. There's all this stuff that has to do with interrogating the first row that's encountered on a spreadsheet that has function name. We're going to put that off for a little bit. Uh, it's the complicated stuff here. Uh, this function was to delete a row out of the shelve object, not necessary anymore now that we're using the CSV files. This loop represented looping through the rows, again, not necessary. And then the knights function and the lumberjack function were what the columns were named over here, and it's not that way anymore. So we will change word to func1 and change word to func2. That now uh, is more in line with the sample data we're using. Uh, not as much fun as Lumberjack and uh, you know the Monty Python references, but for now um, it is more representative of what we're trying to do with parameters and functions. I am going to, you remember how we arbitrarily made a, sort of broke a function in half up there with main? I'm going to do that the same here to remind ourselves that we have um, def, uh, this has to do with functions, finding functions, identifying functions. Let's, we have do sheets, so this will be do funks. Strong identity, do funks. And I'll just open, close, parenthesis, and I'll throw up. Uh, oh, it's actually good form to have the, those sorts of comments there. That's a documentation of a function. So I'll just throw a pass in there. And uh, now it's a little bit more organized. And uh, we'll test and make sure it still runs. I didn't do anything stupid, which is always a possibility. I do stupid things. Um, everything's working. So, uh, we have uh, main do sheet, and it is now time to have, um, oh, we don't even need the return there after it's done that function. That'll just come back on its own. Test that. Oh, by the way, when is a good time to test? Now is a good time to test. Every edit you make, it's worth running uh, the code and seeing if it's doing what you intended. We want def do row, do row, 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 do row, row, and that will be a row. And uh, print a row. And we are now going to move all the responsibility for printing inside of that. And instead of print, string a row, and we probably don't even need that string as my recent discovery showed. We want to 
do row a row. And the outcome of this is going to be um, the same output. We are simply moving the printing that was already happening into a function called do row. Test it. As planned. Really exciting, huh? The output has not changed at all, but now from a uh, program organization standpoint, we've got our point of entry called main. We have do sheet and uh, do row and do funks, which is the part we'll bring alive in the future, because uh, in the hopefully near future, because of course what we're moving towards is replacing these question marks with the output of the function named funk1. That's the sexy, exciting bit of this project that makes us into an incredibly powerful open-ended framework for doing all you could imagine and dream for in the way of second degree, third degree, social media and SEO investigations, alleviating hours of tedium that you would otherwise uh, have to do to do this kind of stuff by hand. And I know people out there can't see it yet. Anyone who's used some of my projects from the past might have seen environments like this, but it has never realized its full potential because it has never been in GitHub, had these YouTube videos, and been turned into a free and open source project that can uh, just sort of be plug and play for anybody by the time it's done all equipped with an education on what I'm calling the short stack, Linux, Python, Vim, and Git, the four tools you, that will serve you for the rest of your life and mastery. Oh, guess where this is running? All this stuff I'm showing you is running on this piece of hardware right here. That's right, when I do this, this code that you see here on, on the screen, I guess I point that way maybe, that code is running on this. Well, thanks for joining me. Be sure to thumbs up this video and uh, share it and subscribe. And I'll talk to you soon after the weekend. This is my last video. Hopefully I won't have another two week hiatus. Make sure you like it if you wanna see me again before another two weeks go by.